All right, so let's take a look at this problem. Again, try to solve this first before watching the solution. So we have a hose and in this hose it has a diameter of eight millimeters and we're gonna have some water flowing through the hose and essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up a beaker, one liter. Okay, water flows through. We're gonna fill up one beaker in 20 seconds. All right, and then we're just gonna go ahead and solve this problem. So the first question is asking for the volume flow rate. So volume flow rate, anytime you see the word rate, okay, you should think something over time. So in this case, our something over time is going to be volume per time. So that would be our volume flow rate. Okay, and in the, um, the video, we derived that equation. So this would be volume over time, and this would be also equal to area times velocity. So in this case, you just kind of look at what's been given to you and see which of these is going to work to find your volume flow rate. In this particular case, um, they give us the time and they give us the volume. So one liter, as you can see, uh, or one meter cubed is equal to 1,000 liters. So in other words, 0 0.001 meter cubed is equal to um, one liter. So this is the amount of volume we're going to um, fill up, and that took 20 seconds. Okay, so when you calculate that out, you're going to get 5 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed per second. So this would be our volume flow rate here. And this is an important number because this is going to stay the same throughout the problem. That's what we mean by continuity. So the flow of uh, volume per second is going to stay the same throughout. So letter B is now asking for the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate, um, that would be again mass over time would be our mass flow rate. This could also be density times area times velocity, okay? Or if we even take this a little step further, remember density is equal to volume, sorry, mass over volume, okay? And so if we rearrange this, we could also write this as density times volume over time. Or if you look at this, this would be, simply be density, actually I'm not going to write it again, this would be density times our volume flow rate. All right, so in this problem we, we know the density is of water. Okay, let's write the units just so you can see. So this would be kilogram per meter cubed times our five times 10 to the negative fifth meter cubed per second. And this is gonna go ahead and give us our, our mass flow rate. And you can see easily this is just gonna be five times 10 to the negative two kilograms per second. Okay, all right, let's take a look at letter C. How fast is the water moving through the hose? So at this point, we're looking for our velocity. So we could use either of these two equations to, to go ahead and calculate that out. Uh, I'm gonna simply use the area times velocity with the volume flow rate. So again, this would be the volume flow rate V over T should equal the area times our velocity. And so since we already know the volume flow rate, that was 5 times 10 to the negative fifth times our area. So this was a hose. So our area of a hose would be pi r squared times its velocity. Um, and so the radius, the diameter was given, right? The diameter was 8 millimeters. That means our radius is going to be 4 millimeters. So write this as 0 0.004. Square that out times velocity. Okay, you go ahead and calculate our velocity. See, when I do it, I get um, 0.995 meters per second. Okay, or, you know, for simplicity, for conceptual sake, let's just say it's one, one meter per second. All right, the last and final question is asking, what happens if we change our hose? So here's our normal hose right here. We're going to put a nozzle on the end of that hose like this, right? And so we're going to go from a diameter of eight millimeters to a diameter of four millimeters, right? 
So conceptually, what's going to happen is the velocity has to go up. Our velocity has to increase here. So this is, say, our v1. Our velocity through here has to be faster. And the reason it has to be faster is we want the same amount of mass to move through per second. And so if this is shrinking down, there's less space for the mass to go through, so it's going to have to travel faster. So the continuity equation we've written, you can write it many ways. You can write a v, a1 v1 equals a2 v2. Okay. Um, you could also simply use the volume flow rate, since we already know that, and that's going to be constant, right? And so that could be equal to a v. That's going to be that is going to be equal to a v throughout the whole problem whether it's in the problem we did up here with the one area or the problem we did here with another area. So I'll go ahead and do it this way and then let's see what happens here. So we're going to have essentially everything the same that we have up here, right? Here I'll do it over here. 5 times 10 to the negative fifth equals, let's just skip down to here, pi, and this time it's going to be 0.002 squared times velocity. And when you solve for this velocity, all right, plug it in, I get uh, 3.9898 or approximately 4. So notice what happened here. We cut the diameter in half and we quadrupled the velocity. We cut the diameter in half and we quadrupled the velocity. Well, why did that happen? Again, if we look at this, a1 v1 equals a2 v2. And since the area is equal to pi r squared, if the radius is cut in half, that means that the area would be 1 fourth, right? If we cut that radius in half, our area is going to be 1 fourth. Well, if our area is one fourth, so let's write it over here. If our area is one fourth, well, then our velocity is going to have to be four times larger. And so that's what we got here. So use that concept. You're going to get a lot of problems where they just ask you this conceptually. You should be able to kind of do this in your head to figure out how much the velocity goes up or goes down just by looking at that nice continuity relationship.